Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Enrique Moore. So for providing you a little bit of context, uh, uh, this project takes place at UOC, this Universidad Oberta de Catalunya, completely online university based uh, here in Barcelona. And right now we have around 60,000 students, right? I would like to start with a photo of a classical physical learning computer laboratory and why, uh, uh, what, what happened in, in that kind of uh, learning space. This is a space where students listen to the teacher, of course, but uh, uh, students also do things, practice, they try, they try again and they make errors, they talk with their peers and ask uh, uh, how are you solving that the teacher goes around and takes a look on the, on the screens of the, of the learners and the teacher has a clear idea of what's the progress of each, uh, uh, of each learners, right? And in the best cases, it's also a learning space where students reflect on their own uh, uh, practice and progress, right? So the, my presentation is focused on learning laboratories and we understand learning laboratories as a, a learning space where the process is as important as the result. So we think that uh, what learners do is as important uh, as what they submit as an assignment at the end. And this is very important in blended and online uh, learning settings because most of them are, are very focused on uh, providing assignments to the students and the students having to submit something and the teacher uh, uh, provides a mark, right? Uh, our motivation and needs were that we needed an online laboratory where students can practice, can explore, can share uh, things, all with the idea of the, of the photo I was uh, uh, providing here, was showing here. A laboratory of learning to code and learning the first steps to, to code, to program, based on activities. So when students develop for their uh, abilities to code, they will do projects and they will use other environment, right? And we here, we also needed an integrated development or learning to code environment right inside the, the, the integrated with the, our uh, online laboratory. And also the idea of being aware of and being aware to visualize, also being able to visualize as a student my own progress, but as a teacher. So this is also a tool to better help uh, teachers to guide students. So the teachers uh, uh, can guide students and can uh, help them to reflect on their own learning process. So we call that uh, uh, laboratory code lab. And we focus the main interface on practice, share and awareness, as we show here. Uh, I provide the screen capture in, in Catalan because it's, it's, uh, we, we, we teach in Catalan and Spanish. So in, in the lower part, we can see the uh, collection of activities grouped by units. Here, a space of communication where st students and teachers share uh, uh, their progress, share their practice, and uh, monitoring or tracking a, a section where they can visualize uh, uh, their own progress. In that laboratory, what learners can do? So they can, they enter to the laboratory, they see the list of uh, uh, units, they open a, the, a unit, they go to an, an activity. We provide a, an activity statement, they can read it, we, uh, they can edit code, Ex uh, ex execute that code, visualize uh, the results of the ex execution of that code. We ask them to uh, uh, provide uh, uh, a checkbox, uh, uh, to complete the checkbox when the activity is completed. And also when they finish an activity, we ask them about their perception, about time, emotion, and, and difficulty of that activity, right? Uh, also, we provide uh, learners with a complete dashboard uh, where they can visualize their progress, the time spent, the number of attempts, the number of uh, uh, times they access to activities, they edit code, etc. right? And for instructors or for teachers, 
we also uh, teachers can have a general view, have a, a general view of the whole classroom. We have uh, several indicators for each student in that classroom. The teacher can select one student and go to the lab of, of that student. And again, they can see all the data, uh, uh, all the dashboard of, uh, of that student. And with that information, uh, instructors can better guide their, their students. Uh, instructors or teachers can also access to all that information uh, uh, aggregated by unit or challenge, as, as we call it. So they can keep track of how a student's progress in each unit, visualize their uh, data, and provide guidance. And also, being a, a learning to code laboratory, teachers can go to a specific uh, activity, see how all, how all the classroom is doing that activity, go to a specific student, see their data about the, the, the student, hear that the student, they are asked to draw uh, their name coding in P5.js. Here the teacher can see the, the, how the student solved that, that activity and execute uh, and then move to the next, to the next uh, uh, student to review uh, uh, his or her activities. Right? With that, we uh, uh, remove a lot of uh, uh, working load of the teachers because if not, students are submitting in a submission system their code, the teachers have to download it load it to their uh, programming environment, execute it there, and then send feedback to the, to the student. So with that idea, uh, 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 we connect with the, the idea that I mentioned at the beginning. So the teacher being at the classical physical laboratory, uh, walking around, taking a, look at the, taking a look at the screens of the, of the students uh, and, and being aware of how they are uh, progressing. Right? The team for that project was, uh, so I'm, I'm faculty member, so I'm teacher, I'm researcher, was also composed, composed by UX designers, developers, and PhD students. Our methodology was mainly based uh, uh, on design, so with a human-centered design approach, very iterative, uh, uh, using partic participatory methods, prototyping a lot, involving students uh, uh, and teachers in each step and each decision we, we, we make. And also we develop it uh, uh, with the agile development approach, but uh, uh, agile development approach is, on, is only a way of, of de developing. So we think the value of that project is, is the, the design approach. About, we evaluate and test for three years now uh, this lab. We started three uh, years ago with only, only one course, that is programming for design and arts. Uh, this, we are using currently the, that lab in design and arts degrees, where students enroll to that degrees and uh, only two uh, uh, semesters later discover they have a mandatory course of programming. So they, they, we have students that they did not choose a degree that uh, classically that they will learn to code, so that they found a mandatory course of coding. So with that lab, we, we try to help teachers and, and students to code. We started the first uh, year with uh, 200 students. Each year we added a new, a new course, right? And right now uh, the code lab is supporting P5.js, JavaScript, and C. And the main takeaways of uh, our work uh, till now are that uh, we try to follow a learner-centered design and we think it works. So it works on paper, but in our case, it works in, in, in practice. We went very slow, step by step. We iterate a lot. We provided new, new functionalities. We dropped that functionalities because they were not useful or we need to change the approach. We completely changed several times the, the interface you just seen today. And also, even we, we are having a, a, a laboratory to learning to code, we have a, a laboratory that 
at the end is an online laboratory for any kind of uh, learning by doing activity, right? You can have more information in that address. And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Henrik. Uh, have we got any questions? I, I really like the approach being kind of practice what you preach. So you're obviously coding and developing things. And having gone through agile delivery with that step-by-step -step process, mm -hmm. seeing the output of what you've got, I thought that's really good. I, I have to say that even the, the agile development approach is not completely designed to take into account an iterative uh, uh, design approach. So, so we, we needed to adjust like having uh, uh, alternate meetings of design meetings and development meetings to, to match everything in, in the development uh, approach. If not, when we have the, the, the development meetings for finishing the sprint, developers just went there just to validate. So I code that, so give me your okay, is, is that functionality is valid or not? It's, okay, it's not, it's not that simple, right? Yes, yeah, getting that feedback. Good. Yes, yeah. and we change that approach in each semester. So I provide information by years, but uh, uh, we are organized in semester. So each semester we reconsider the decisions of the, of the previous uh, semester. I have to say as well that uh, we are a completely online university. We have our own LMS that is not Moodle, but we use Moodle. I mean, our LMS connect with Moodle, and we use some of the Moodle classrooms, uh, depending on the course or tools. And that Code Lab can uh, connect to Moodle or to any LMS that use uh, LTI. Um, does Does it, does Code Lab have like an English option or other languages or just in? No, it's not developed right now, but the, the development supports the multi-language. So we are waiting for someone that needed to use in, in English just yeah. to add the, 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 the English uh, module. Yeah. 